This is part 31 of rebuilding a vintage open steam launch and it covers fitting the condenser drain tap and finishing the piping. Here I'm removing the piping from my acid bath. If you watched the last episode you will notice that the last scene in the last episode was me putting the piping into the acid bath. Now it's coming out and it's a totally different colour. You can clearly see that the piping is no longer tarnished and covered in burnt flux residue. What I need to do first though is rinse off all the acid. This is the part of the workshop where I do all the filing, grinding and sanding operations, as well as silver soldering things on top of the vise. Everything gets quite hot, so I always have this pot of water handy next to the belt sanders and the vise. I can quench the silver soldered parts so that the thermal shock loosens the flux, and also when I'm shaping pieces of metal using the belt sanders, the parts get hot, so I can dip these in the water to keep them cool, to stop me from burning my fingers. I suppose I could wear a pair of gloves, but I don't like wearing gloves in the workshop. I like to know where all my fingers are at any given time just by looking at them. Plus I like a bit of pain now and again because it keeps me focused. I don't like to ever get complacent in the workshop. You have to be very careful in these sort of places. A lot of tooling in the home workshop can be dangerous if you misuse it. Always keep your wits about you. If you feel tired, or light-headed, or you need to have something to eat, stop the work, go and put all that right first. In no time at all the last piece of copper pipe goes into the water and it's all nice and clean, but it needs to be shined up. Well not all of it, I'm only going to clean up the quarter inch pipe because this is the exhaust piping. I'm just putting the finishing touches to this quarter inch copper pipe, I polished it using the polishing spindle and I'm just using some brasso to get a finer finish. The superheater in the boiler supplies the steam to the engine at a very high temperature and the pipes are hot enough to burn your fingers very badly. So what I'm going to do is clad the inlet piping using some string. I'll be doing this very shortly. But for the moment I'm going to continue cleaning up the exhaust piping because I want this to be nice and shiny. I don't see the need for any cladding on the exhaust piping. When the steam plant is actually in steam this exhaust piping will also be very hot, but nowhere near as hot as the inlet piping. And it looks nice to have some copper piping that you can actually polish. But I've done enough polishing for the moment, time to put the brasso away and get on with something else. It's time I think to install the servos permanently in the boat. The servo mountings are attached to the boat, and I use some cyanoacrylate adhesive as well as screws to hold them to the boat. I wasn't going to do, but I thought, well, if the screws tear out of the hull, then it's going to be a problem. So in the end, I went along the belt and braces approach. This is never going to come loose. When I made these couple of servo mountings for the boat, I pre-drilled the pilot holes for the servo mounting. So it's a very simple job to just screw the servos to the mount. It really is important to pre-drill any servo mounting holes, because if you make a servo mount, and you don't drill a pilot hole and force a screw in there it's likely to split and it's horrible if you hear that crack as the wood splits. As you can see in this clip the servo moves the valve okay and it's just a case of what to do with the wire. I cannot leave the wires dangling about inside the boat because if they catch on something I have a problem and here is the solution. I'm strapping this to the gas pipe. You will also notice that I've actually screwed the gas pipe to the side of the boat. This is to hold it in position so I do not put any stress on it when I install the gas canister. I need to install a drain valve to the condenser. I was going to use a remote pipe but there's not much room in here. Instead I fitted a globe valve directly to the condenser. And with the addition of a short piece of right angle pipe it will be very easy to drain the condenser. As I mentioned in the last episode, the superstructure that fits in the centre part of the boat is quite tight and difficult to remove. But the bow superstructure and the stern superstructure are very easy to just lift out of the boat. This is the last piece of piping, I'm pleased to say, and it's a pipe that goes from the water pump to the clack on the boiler. And for this I'm using 3 16 pipe with some adapter unions. This short but essential piece of pipe fits between the boiler clack valve and a block that is between the water pump and the bypass valve. The water pump is only effective when the engine is running and it pumps water either into the boiler 
or if you open the bypass valve, it pumps the water back into the lake. I plan to leave the bypass valve permanently open, so the water just circulates to lubricate the pump ram, and just squirts a little bit of water out of the side of the boat. I don't like the idea of using lake water to feed the boiler. You may have noticed that there's an extra inlet on the small block in the side of the boat. And what I'm going to do is make a remote water tank with a hand pump, and I will feed water in at this point. This is a ball of string, and with this I'm going to clad the piping. It's quite simple to do, but if you get it wrong, it's not good. So take your time with it, and if you make a mess, pull the string off and start again. You need to get the string right up to the union nut, but don't put too much cyanoacrylate adhesive on, because if you do that, the union nut will not go around. The cyanoacrylate adhesive will grab quite quickly, and once the string is held firmly to the pipe, you just simply wrap the string around the pipe. Every four or five turns, push the string together to keep it tight. I like to put a small amount of cyanoacrylate adhesive on the pipe approximately every six turns. This pipe cladding is going to be painted, but there must not be any gaps between the coils of string, so keep the string pulled tight as you wrap it round the pipe. And here's the first pipe done, and now, just for a change, it's on to the next pipe. I've done some things in my time, but this is really tedious. I have to stop periodically because it makes my hand ache. When you try it, you'll see what I mean. Once or twice, I've got cramp in my fingers from doing this, and that's not a good feeling either. As I say many times in these videos, if you get fed up of doing something, then stop for a while, go and do something else and come back to it. But with this job, there's no solution. It's just incredibly tedious, it makes your hands ache, but short of getting someone else to do this job, you've just got to get on with it. I'm running this video at quite a high speed, because if I put it in real time, even I would go into a coma editing it. In fact now I've just put the video into warp speed just to get it out of the way. That's two pipes done. Now for the last one. And thankfully this is the shortest of the pipes. By the way I should have mentioned earlier, it's very important not to use plastic string, it has to be proper string, such as gardening string, which as far as I know is made out of string. And after all that, it's time to paint the string. And luckily I've run out of paint. I just have this tiny little bit of acrylic paint left in a pot. But it's really thick and gloopy. So I'm going to paint it without the camera being on. To be honest, my neck is aching. Because when I'm doing this, you can't see my face, which is probably a good thing. But I'm looking at the camera's viewfinder most of the time. Because when I don't look at the viewfinder, I move the item out of shot. As I mentioned in the last episode, I've been doing some decorating lately, and the good thing about that is I do have left over lots of white paint. So I'll bring some of that down into the workshop, and I will be painting this string with that. But I don't think I'll bother videoing it, because it's just too tedious. You'll have to use your imagination. It's something like this, but more of it. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.